Hi guys, welcome back to the Big Band Theory. I'm Taylor J. Williams, and today I am here with the one and only guitarist out of Travis. Hi, Taylor. Hi. So, explain what the history and how the hell Travis started. Oh, it's a long story. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very long story. Um, right, okay. Back to my school days, a little town called Lindsay, just above Glasgow. And um, I was in one school band, and there was a rival school band. There was two bands in a school. Our band were really, really bad. We were, but, but, you know, but we had fun. We played like uh, Rolling Stones songs and the early Primal Scream stuff. We were kind of wasters, really. We had, a, we had a vacuum solo in one song, like a Hoover solo. And then the other band were really professional. They played Simple Minds and U2 songs, and we hated them. <laughs> and we used to sabotage them. Like We used to have get battle of the band things and try and sabotage them. And then my band fell apart because we were all wasters. And the other band, the professional ones, lost a guitarist. And I joined the rival band. Oh. I, jo- I joined the enemy. So um, so I played with them, and then literally over the years, that's what became Travis. But I'm the only person that was in that band that's left in this band now. There was oh, a right. there was um, a drummer who left, and then Neil joined, and then a singer. We, the singer had left, and then we got another singer. We had a female singer for a while, and we were like a really piss poor club band <laughs> for the longest while. And then and, and then Fran joined. Fran turned up at our, we had we had rehearsals for singers, which is the worst thing to do. And I don't know if you've ever rehearsed for a singer before. No. And especially in Glasgow, oh my God, it's, it's like every facet of humanity you could see. You could, you could do like a documentary just about the people that applied. Oh. And then Fran turned up at the end of her hit rehearsal and went, oh, Neil said I could come along and, and do a rehearsal. And we were like, no, we're finished. And he, and he went, no, you want to try me out? You know, he's, yeah. he, he, he stated a good case and then he sang and we were like, that. yeah, he's, yeah. he's the man. So then it was me, Fran and Neil, the drummer. And then it was two brothers that had started a school band. Who I, who I knew and still, I mean, I still get on really well with, but it just wasn't right. It just didn't feel right. So we kind of so got, got in our Dougie, our bass player. It, we, I was in art school at this point with Dougie and Fran. And Dougie, we used to just sit and play on a Friday night. I used to go and jam in like, the printmaking building. We'd just play guitars and sing, sing shit. <laughs> and, um, and we got Dougie. And Dougie, Dougie never played the bass before. He, he could play guitar, but he never picked up a bass in his life. And he went, do you want to play bass in a band? And Dougie went, no. <laughs> and so, so we managed to convince him that Franz took a, t- t- took a for a big like half hour walk and managed to convince Dougie to join the band, and then it was the four of us. And kind of, uh, uh, people talk about chemistry. You know, they talk about chemistry in bands and things. It was as soon as Dougie joined, the four of us sat in a room together and we played. All, we had yeah. we had all I wanted to do is rock written by that point, and we played it together. And it wasn't good by any you know we went we went good, but it felt good. And I think it's that feeling that you sort of chase the, the feeling that oh this is this is it this is a band. And then we spent a year. Hold up, and there's a there's a pub in Glasgow called the Horseshoe that Neil used to Neil used to work in, and it's like a real old man's pub. It's like the, the longest pub in Europe. It's like a big long pub, and they have like karaoke upstairs. And then above that, they had these rehearsal rooms that were abandoned for years, and we, they just said you can use them. So for a year, we just hold up in this rehearsal room. We wrote songs, we practiced, we did covers, we just did everything for a year. We literally did nothing but rehearse for a year nonstop. Over, over. Well, and then, <laughs> oh, there we go. It's part two. Yeah. so then we were still at art school. We did one show at the art school before we left for London. We we just finished art school, so we did one show, and that was awful. We were dreadful, but you know, again, it felt good, and we looked good, so that, that, that was enough. And then we moved to London, and kind of just went for it. We just sort of thought, well, we're, we were signing on in Glasgow, you know, and we were, yeah. and we thought, well, we may as well go down to London and sign on for a while and try and make it down there. And we within. We went down in the summer of 96. By the December of 96, we'd done Later with Jules Holland without a record deal. They, they got us on without a record deal just because they heard the music. And um, so we were doing Jules Holland. It was like Lionel Richie was on. and th- I, rem- I always remember the four of us sitting in the sort of seats for Jules Holland at the rehearsal bits. And Lionel Richie sat down and played Easy on the piano, just him. And we were just sitting like going, oh my God, this is it. We've made it. <laughs> I felt like we'd made it by that point. That was it. We're standing, we're sitting watching Lionel Richie. And then that December, we went to Bearsville to record the first album. We got a record deal and we went to Woodstock in, in New York and recorded a first record with Steve Lillyhoy. And it just went from there. So, Well, well. so at what point from going from signing a record deal with Travis yeah. and doing stuff like that, did you decide that, to do past perfect future tense. Past perfect future tense. What's that? <laughs> what do you mean? What's that? Past perfect. What? What do you mean by that? So, so you contributed yeah. to the solo album of Aha. 
Oh right, that I couldn't even remember. I couldn't. I couldn't even tell you the name. Ah, I've done my research, Andy. That was that, that, that was quite far on in our career. That was about three albums in, and um, uh, it was that's, that's Mags, isn't it? From Aha, uh-huh, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, I, I think I believe a couple of Coldplay played in that as well. Yeah, I, the own, I only played guitarist. one, maybe two songs in that. Really, as far as I can remember, it was just a producer we knew who said, "I'm doing guy from Aha's uh-huh, album, and do you want to do you want to come and do it?" But I mean, literally, I'd go in. I was probably not in there longer than about an hour. Just did a couple of guitar lines and tracks, and then just bugged off. And he said, because he's quite a famous painter in Norway, he's, 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 he sort of exhibits and like sort of the, you know, the equivalent of the Tate in Norway. And he said, "I'll give you a painting for doing a record." I guess I said, "I don't want to get paid or anything." He's never given me a painting yet. That all oh. that guy out of a house owes me a painting. Uh, well, <laughs> when this goes out, yeah. send him the link. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going on tour. I believe so, yeah. We, we were meant to be going into tour last year, we were meant to be going into tour the year before, but we're hopefully going into tour this year, COVID permitting. It's, well, you're playing, at, well, Paris, you're playing all across the UK, you're playing Scotland, you're yeah. playing Belgium, but what I find weird about your tour mm. is you're playing Paris, then you're doing UK, then you're doing Scotland, yeah. then you're doing Belgium, Yeah. then you're finishing in Edinburgh, so you're going to go from Scotland <laughs> yeah. to Belgium, Back to as well, yeah. Back to Scotland. It's, it's just where these things fall, you know. It's, it, some of them, I think the, the Edinburgh thing will probably be a festival, isn't it? And then we got, we got. I know. We got I think one of them, might, one, one of them is a festival. festival I, I, think. Know, I know we've got the the Jerry Cinnamon thing as well, which is yeah. I mean, so the, those things we don't get to choose when they happen. So you just uh, mm. you either go yes or no, and you just make it work. We we spend so long travelling as a band anyway. It's yeah. the, most of your time is stuck in a van or a bus somewhere, you know. <laughs> and it's you just get used to it. It's but yeah, if. If it was all our own shows, and even then, even when it's all your own shows, it's venues. You know, it's hard to get venues at the moment. Yeah. You know, especially since if you think about it, two years worth of, of gigs are going to start happening this year. Really, I mean, there was a few towards the end of last year, but most bands have waited till this till the, till this year. So everyone's looking to get venues. Everyone. So yeah. sometimes availability of places and things is, is what routes a tour rather than what's the most convenient thing. Yeah, but I don't mind. I don't mind traveling. So you said you toured. And travelled uh, all across with Travis. Yeah, yeah. What has been your weirdest fan experience while you've been Weirdest fan Travis? experience, okay. Um, the, the fans in Mexico are amazing, but they are mental. You know, they're, 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 they're rabid. <laughs> and um, we, we, we did this tour... And we were we were coming in from the back of the venue to the Rocky theme tune, and we'd walk through the crowd wearing the, the sort of boxing gowns, and we did it all across the world. We did this whole tour, and every time it worked, you know, you would get held up a bit with the fans. Yeah, and things. we did it in Mexico City, and it took us about fifteen twenty minutes to get to the stage. <laughs> it was it was a big ve- we we played yeah. like big venues in Mexico that we do well there, and um, but they were just going crazy. They were pulling the, the, the like all their robes were ripped and everything, <laughs> and like, we got there like one by one as we were getting pulled out by crew and things. They were just going absolutely like crazy for it. So so that was quite weird, but it was great. I mean, and, and the show was amazing. It's like the long. I think that was the longest show we ever played. I think we played for like. Nearly three hours that night, and we never play that long. We're like hour and a half, right? We're off, you know. So, I, but it was just uh, the great, great audiences there. So that was really good. The other one, the other weirdest was um, uh, S- uh, South Korea. The first time we played South Korea, and um, it's, it's great fans again, amazing. But nobody had warned us that they were through. I think it was closer. They were all going to throw paper planes at us. And it was just a thing. They, they must have all got together online or something and, and agreed. So I just looked up and there was just all this stuff flying <laughs> towards me. And, it, and I absolutely shot myself. But it, it, it was lovely because it was all these paper planes and it was all these like sweet messages, you know, when you fold them out. And it was thousands of them. There was all these messages on them, just like nice messages to the Aww. band. It was a really sweet thing. But it, it, when, when you didn't know what was happening, yeah, but you, <laughs> you, a bit you just surprised. see millions yeah, of yeah, paper yeah. planes. Yeah, no, but, but it was lovely. You know, it was really nice. Again, great crowds. So we, we have they have the best time there as well. It's, it's weird when you first go somewhere you've got no preconception of what's what's going to happen what it's going to be like and I remember the first time we went there and it's just amazing that, that, that I think because we took a while getting there as well you know you know it was quite late in a career they just were so ready for it it was just such a nice night and we've been back a few times and it's always been good uh, right so what was it like when you were going from just starting off as a band yeah, to yeah. Tra- traveling through to realizing that you have 111 million streams on Spotify. Wow. So that means I make about a pound fifty. 
<laughs> sort of like that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> sort yeah, of like yeah, that. It's, it's great. And the thing is, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm with all the artists, and it's the, the, the whole the, the model of Spotify is sort of fairly sort of weed in their favour rather than bands favour but I do use Spotify I love Spotify because I've listened to music I would never have listened to you know you find weird little sort of like you know bands from the middle of nowhere that you wouldn't listen to otherwise you would never find in a vinyl shop or anything back in the day so I do love it for that and I love the fact that our music is reaching so many people but it's, it's and it's not for us I mean with a band like us we make our money from playing live you know yeah. but for bands starting out that's where like something needs to be done about the whole streaming thing because it's not, and it's not even about the, the the money per stream is ridiculous, but it's also about the fact that say I was into your band and that that was the only band I listened to in Spotify. My tenor still isn't going to you. Yeah. Whereas back in the day, I would have bought your album with that tenor, and your tenor would have gone exclusively to you. Now that tenor's going to Taylor Swift or something because she's got way more streams than yeah. you have. So that's where it's unfair in new bands. I, I think the, the model in Spotify really has to work for new bands. For older bands, you know, we've got other ways of making income. You know, so it's not it's not so bad. You know what I mean? But for the younger bands, that's where it's they've really got to work something out, or it's going to it's just going to destroy music. It's going to s- s- sort of swallow it up. Yeah, because when you. When you're looking on Spotify and stuff like that yeah. and you're, you're thinking, oh, I want that album, I want to listen yeah. to that, you can either go and buy the album for a tenner yeah. or you can put it to Spotify and listen to that album yeah. and millions of others. Yeah. So it's the, it, the way the money and income is that's yeah. gone into music is... It's, it's, it's also the, the thing with Spotify, and I think for for sort of like you know sort of people starting out in music as well, it's overwhelming. There's too much music there. It's like it's like walk. You know, you know, have you ever been on holiday where you have those all you can eat buffets? Yeah, and you end up with just like a load of mess in your plate. <laughs> rather rather than eating a meal, it's like sort of like a, you know a bit of salad here. There's a bit of, sort of curry there. There's a bit of like spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> you know, and, and that's what Spotify is like. People just go in. I think there, there should be a way that you can curate it a bit more. Where see see. Say for like a third of the price or a half the price, you just get ten albums a month. Now you can choose those ten albums out of all the albums that ever existed, or all the ones that are on Spotify. But you just have ten albums a month, so therefore you listen to those ten albums a bit more, and it, it means yeah. you sort of like you concentrate on the music a bit more. I think when you just jump from track to track to track, it's very hard to take in what a band's really about. Yeah, it's not just that when you go out and buy a physical yeah. album or copy yeah. as well. Is yeah, you can listen to the songs and you can learn about the yeah. music do, through that though. But you can read about them within that album as well. Yeah, You're getting yeah. so much more. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, when I was young, music was like a real social thing. I'd, I'd have like three albums. That was it. When I was like 13, 14, because that's all you could, have, you know, you could afford three yeah. albums. But your mate would have a different, I mean, I was a rock kid, so I'd have like, sort of, you know, Queen's Greatest Hits, I'd have like sort of ACDC Back in Black, and I think it was Sabbath Bloody Sabbath or something. But my mate would have like uh, Sabbath Volume 4, you know, and yeah. you'd go around to his house to listen to that record. And it was a social thing. You'd get to know people because they had certain records. You, you Like the Rolling Stones got to together because one of them was carrying a record that the other one wanted to listen to and, yeah. Keith, and that doesn't happen anymore nobody nobody's looking over your shoulder going oh you listen to that on spotify oh, i like that too yeah it, it's become a very a very solitary thing whereas music used to be a much more social thing i think with headphones as well people people very rarely listen to music through speakers anymore it's yeah. all it's all just about me what i listen to yeah. whereas you used to have things uh, things on and people go oh what's that and you and you share music a lot more with each other rather than it being about just you so i think it, it has changed how music sort of Socially, we interact socially with music. Yeah, so going back to your yourself and how did you go from being a guitarist in Travis yeah. to singing lead vocal? <laughs> I very rarely do. <laughs> I've, I've, do you know what? I've done it once on stage, once, one solitary time. It was me and Fran were doing, a, doing an acoustic tour around America. Is that the one video I watched? Yeah, the ancient it? train one. Yeah, yeah, it was in a church in Austin. Yeah, in, in Texas. Yeah, and it literally that is literally the and one. T- the one you time stopped was. after like the second to third yeah. line and yeah. went. What are the words? <laughs> and then the crowd just carried yeah. on for you because I've never sung it before. I, 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 I literally had never sung it live, and someone had asked, and I said, "Okay, I'll do it." And that's the one. T- if you watch the history of Travis, if you watched every gig of Travis, it's probably less than a hundred words I've ever said in stage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, and actually, probably less than fifty. I very rarely even say anything on stage. I just, I just like playing guitar. It's, it's kind of like that's what I do, you know. That's my favorite thing to do. I like, I, I do like singing. I enjoy singing, but it's not something I do professionally. Yeah, it's something I can get away with. <laughs> I do, I do backing vocals all the time on stage. Yeah, and, it, and that's fine. I, I like doing backing vocals. I, I, we, me, Dougie, and Fran were always good at doing three parts. You know, like we, we always just used to sit and do that. And it was, and it's that I find really nice. I like that. I like voices coming together. Yeah. 
So when you, how did you go? How did that come across? How did that conversation work for you to sing lead vocal? Though was that just you did it one day and it, yeah, it, it stuck? Or it, it, it tended to be like so, like when we when we started sort of writing records, you know, like, and it was Fran. I mean, Fran wrote the, most of the majority of the records, and that was fine because he's a great writer, and and also he's got to sing the songs. So it's kind, of, and then you know I, I'll write the odd song. I, I'm I'm not. I like songwriting and I'll, I'll do it, but it's not my end game. It's not my yeah. end goal. I, I, I like being a guitarist. I like someone giving me a song and working out what I'm going to play the guitar on it. That's what I prefer doing. That's that's what my sort of like real comfort zone is. But I'll, I'll write songs because it's a good way to sort of you know get things out. And um and I think they probably had written a song and Fran was like that. Well, you, you sing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I mean, and we, and you forget back in the day. We used to release two CD singles for every single we released. Now, now you don't even really physically release singles anymore. Yeah. So it's just you just release a song. Whereas back in the day, we had two CD singles, and mo- at one point it was three extra tracks per CD single. So for every single you released, you were releasing another six songs that wouldn't get released anywhere else. They weren't in yeah. an album. And say you had four singles in an album, that's twenty four songs on top of the you know that you've yeah. got to write on top of the ten, twelve songs for an album. So that's when you know trying to go. Has anyone anyone else got any songs? <laughs> you go okay, I'll go. <laughs> and then so and sometimes sometimes he'd sing them. Sometimes he'd go, you know what? That's you know that, that sounds better in your voice. So you just sing that. So it, it would it would just tend to be one of those things. You you don't you don't really think about it that much. It's just kind of like okay, you just fall into these things. Yeah. So again, how did you? G- You've done so much stuff that, yeah. like, I'm going to run out of time at some point. Yeah. How do you go from being in a band, touring all over the world, to becoming a university teacher? Well, uh, you know, they're just like anything else, I kind of fell into it, you know. It's, 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 it came up, somebody said, oh, you know, somebody said about LMA and um and kind of at that point, it was the, the you know it was at COVID. It's COVID had just yeah. died, and we were meant to be in tour. And I was like, oh, I, I'm not one for sitting about. I don't like doing nothing, and I'm not I'm not good at that. I, I'm not a self motivator. You give me six months at home, and I'll watch a whole bunch of uh, homes <laughs> under the hammer and uh, fall in a bed. I won't be writing songs. You know, I, 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 and let, I'll, if I've got an hour at home or two hours at home, I'll do something. But if I've got six days at home, I'll I'll do nothing. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm one of those guys that can quite happily sit on the couch. So when that came up, I thought, oh yeah, I want. And you know that, that that's an interesting challenge. And it's one of those weird things. It's like, they were like that, right? Never been taught how to teach, you know. And nobody's yeah. ever, nobody ever. I don't, I don't even really get given. You know, you get given a rough plan, but it's kind of like that, right? Just go for it, and you don't realize what you you know until you start trying to teach it. And yeah. Then you're like, All right, yeah, that's kind of useful, and that's kind of. And uh, do you know what? It's been amazing. I've had, I've had, I've had a real laugh doing it. It's fun, isn't it? You know, it, it's, it is. It, it, it to be fair, it to be fair, it's like you you come into the lessons yeah. and a normal lesson. You come in and it sit down and crack on yeah, and yeah, do yeah. this and do that. You come into your lesson, we all start off in a room, and you yeah. just blast the music and be like, "Yeah, who's in? Well, oh, yeah, it's, see you later." It's about it's about music, isn't it? You know, that's that's the thing. It's one of these things, that, and I've always said it. Is that you you can teach it so much, and I can teach you bits of it, and I can teach you how to develop it. But at the end of the day, it's music's something you feel. Music's something you instinctively do. So all yeah. I can, all I can do is gauge you and go, "Okay." Right, okay, let's go this, let's go this way, let's go that way. But it's down to how you all do it. You know, I, I can't teach you how to be you. How to, I can't teach you how to express yourself musically because that's something you very personal. So, so I'm just there for guidance. I'm just there to set you in the right path and tell you funny stories. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And all that, <laughs> that you can't you, and you can't see on podcasts. <laughs> yeah, the, the, yeah, I, I'm not going to mention <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, so you've gone from how I, I, I just. Where did that come up of, like, how did someone think, oh, I know, we need a teacher, Andy Dunlop, who, how did someone I got, I got, Well, I got in touch with them. The, 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 someone said, oh, the, the, someone said, oh, they, they're looking for people with sort of industry experience. So I got in touch with um, Matt and said, you know, that, that, I've done this, I've done that. And he, he was like, that, you're great. Do you want to start? And I was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> and it just, it just it, again, it just happened really, really naturally. I mean, I... I it's one of these things that I, before I did it, I didn't know if I could do it. You know, it's, it, until you do something. I, yeah. I, I like doing things that scare scare me. Like yeah. this, this year, um, I did a children's book. I illustrated a children's book. Yeah. And it, it scared the hell out of me. I, I said yes, and then left a few months, and then suddenly I had to do it, and I was like, <laughs> I can't do this. And b- because you you give yourself no option, you sort of say I'll do it, 
And once you start doing it, I think people people can achieve anything if they want to. And, and, it was, yeah. and I mean, obviously, I went to art school. I know I can draw. I know I can paint. But doing a kids' book is a whole load of different. Yeah. Way. But it was fun, and I, and I did it, and it's really good. And it's kind of I think it's good to sort of throw yourself out your comfort zone sometimes. And, and teaching was out my comfort zone definitely. I mean, I, I usually work an hour and a half a day. <laughs> and yeah. I, when I'm on tour, that's it. <laughs> they get an hour and a half out of me, and the rest of the time I'm sitting around drinking coffee and eating. <laughs> Minstrels. Yeah, but like, but, but you do that much stuff. Yeah. How do you find time to even sleep? Yeah, you, you, you find time. You know, it's, it's, it's about balance, you know. It's, it's, uh, it, once we start touring again, it'll, 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 be, it'll be harder a little bit, you know. But, but it tends to be the majority of a band's tours in the summer anyway. It's kind of like, you know, it's yeah. through the festivals and things, and then there'll be little tours. Uh, we, we used to play like about 260 shows a year. Now, that would be hard. I yeah. don't know. At my age, that's not going to happen. You know, it's, it's, we, we don't anymore, you know. And, and, and that sort of intensity just it burns you out. Yeah. I think I think that's the thing. It's, it's what I try and sort of put across when I'm teaching. Everyone thinks it's just about making it. It's just about getting to that point where you get, like, a record deal or you release a record. That's the easy part, almost. It's hard. It's hard enough, but that's the easy part. Once you make it, that's when it gets hard because you you, that, that's when you start doing real work. And that's what takes out people, you know. It's, it's it's my job to prepare people for that point where you, that, this is where it gets tough is when you start having to play two hundred and fifty shows a year and you start yeah. having to do three hundred and sixty interviews and you know and it's like start talking about yourself and learning how to do that isn't easy, you know. Yeah. So we know you're a musician. Yeah. You know your life is music. Yeah. But how good are you remembering lyrics and a bit awful? I should imagine, but let's give it a shot. Right. We have got what two, four, five songs. Five songs, okay, right. Five songs. Let's see how well you do. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how much just, I disgrace myself here. It's just gonna be a random lyric. Okay. Try right. and find the next one. Yeah. Go sit beneath the tree by the railroad track. The tree by the railroad track. Now I do recognise that, so I should know it. But oh come on, you you definitely should know it. <laughs> T- tell me, this, tell me you're not going to give us one of ours because I don't know the lyrics to any of ours. Uh, no, no, it's blanked. On the engines, would see him sitting in the shade. Is this the same one? Yeah, it's the next. That was the next line. What was that again? Go sit. Yeah, go sit beneath the tree by the railroad track. Oh, the engineers would see him sitting in the shade. Nope, blanked. What is it? Johnny Be Good. Ah. Oh. Hey, yeah. Right. One nil to me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> See, I, I, know, I know how to play the guitar. I don't know any of the words to <laughs> Right, second song. Come on, Andy. Okay, yeah. You definitely should know this one yeah. as well. Working for the man every night and day. Working for the uh, oh, that's uh, Proud Mary, isn't it? Yeah. What's the next line? Uh, oh, that's that's where I'll get. Oh, see, I'm 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 dog shit, it looks. Uh, I know the big wheels keep on turning, but that's the one <laughs> after that one. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, no, I don't know the next line. Then you get half a point for that one. What is it? And I never lost one minute of sleep. Ah, right, okay. Good uh, song, great song. Eh? Right, and I don't, I got given this one and said that you'd know it. Right, okay. These next two, I, I got told you'd know it. Yeah? So <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> I haven't, haven't done very well so far, so I'm not sure. But <laughs> I would say I'm sorry if I thought it would change your mind. Oh, right. Man, I'm dreadful at this, haven't I? Give me the next line going. But I know that it that this time I have said too much. Been too unkind. Yeah. Uh, Boys don't cry the cure. Oh uh, yeah. Yep, nah, yeah. Third one. Third second to last. What what you'll do when you get lonely? What you'll do when you get lonely? Oh, 
what you'll do when you get lonely. No, no, I don't, I don't recognise that at all. Lele, you got me on my knees. What's that one? Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. All right. What'll you do when you get lonely? Yeah, okay. I got told you know it. I haven't got a clue. Oh, now I know it. All right. Yep. I see, I know the guitar lines, but I don't know the words. <laughs> Right, and and the, the, guitar to the to final I, one. I, I, I couldn't tell you words of our songs. If you asked me to sing one of our, I, I couldn't. I, like, even the big ones, I probably couldn't tell you all the words to "Why Does It Always Rain On Me." But if you, if you don't get this, you, you, there's something wrong. Okay. <laughs> In a grown-up way, sometimes I get so scared. Oh, that's one of mine, isn't it? That's the ancient train. Yeah. It is. It yeah. is. I'm a little boy. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, but I'm a little boy with a lot, lot more to prove. Some yeah. days go by so fast. fast. Sometimes I wonder how long will this song last. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll know that one because I, I did actually write those lyrics. But, <laughs> but, uh, as I say, that's I, why I said if you didn't get this one. <laughs> but as I say, I probably couldn't tell you all the lyrics to "Why to Is It Always because I'm too busy playing the guitar. You know, I, I, I literally there's there's some songs that some of Fran's lyrics I, I know well because I, I mean because I never listen to her records no no artist listens to their own records you listen because you listen to it an awful lot when you're doing a record yeah you know by the time you finish the record it's like okay I've heard those songs enough for one lifetime but there's a couple of Fran's songs that I'll still sort of stick on occasion we had a, a sort of reissue of the Invisible Band recently and oh yeah 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 you, you did an interview on the James Corden yeah well, yeah yeah, yeah. So, and it was and it was, and it was a, the reissue in vinyl and it was like a really nice sort of version of it with all the B sides and we're doing like the tour next year for it, and um, or this year, sorry now. And um, there's a there's a, a line on that record, and it's in a song called "Indefinitely." And he says, "Time exists, but just on your wrist, so don't panic." And I love that lyric. That's one of my favourite lyrics ever of anyone, not not just Fran. So, so there's, there's some lyrics I listen to, but mostly. When I put on a record, I'm listening to the guitar lines and I'm, yeah. listening, I'm listening to the music more than the, the lyrics. I always, uh, once I started, I mean, I've been doing this, this, this sort of teaching song, right? And I'll, I'll sort of do classes and lyrics and I'll learn as much about doing the classes and the lyrics as sometimes the students do because I'll suddenly realise lyrics that I never really listened to before, like all the old Joni Mitchell ones and everything. Mm. And there's some, some lovely stuff in there. Sounds, well... You are actually going to play us a song. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah, forcing yeah, I, you I, to. I, I, I've t as I've told you, I don't sing much. I, and I'm, I'm not much of a singer. I, I like singing and I enjoy it, but it, it's not my it's not my uh, real thing to do. But but since it's you, Taylor, I'll sing one song. There's a song. This, this, okay, I'll tell you the history of this song. It was a B-side called The Sea. Now, I've done this twice. I did this in Travis as a B-side. And then my, that, that side project's in Auburn. We did a version of it. But... It was written on my honeymoon. We went to uh, the was it Bar Bahamas for a honeymoon. So it was a lo lovely place. I was sat out in the porch with my acoustic guitar on honeymoon, and I wrote a song about a couple trying to commit suicide. And I suicide back to my wife. Said that. Why did you write that in our honeymoon? <laughs> I don't know. It's just it, I, I write quite sad songs a lot of the time, and um, it's about a couple throwing themselves into the sea and the power of the sea, and. Um, I never thought anything about this song ever again. And then one day, you know, you know that reboot of Hawaii Five O. You know this uh, that that American TV show no. Hawaii Five O. It's like a sort of like cop show set in Hawaii. There's like this sort of like new version of it. And I was watching it one day, and this song came on at the start of it, and it totally because you you know when you just don't expect to hear something because it was literally the most obscure Travis song ever. And this song came on at the start of it, and I was like, ah, oh my god, I had to call my wife and go, it's that depressing song I wrote in our honeymoon. Is it the start of some big American cop <laughs> show now? <laughs> well, I can't wait to hear it, Andy. No. Okay, okay. I'll move the mic a little bit away from my mouth. <laughs> uh, and we'll be back in a minute. It's cool to see. See, she is so strong and brave Flexing out with every wave Many ancient sailors' graves The sea will save its own What a day for us to swim Thunder sounds are closing in They'll hug on us like kith and kin And pull us in below And I was wondering why Why should we flow 
swallow the sky And you can swallow great boats You say the moon controls the sea Hand in hand in harmony Maybe that's like you and me Eternally to be Crash against the land Turning rocks into the sand We'll do it like we always plan Just hand in hand alone And I was wondering why Why should we flow Swallow the sky, and you can swallow great boat. Right, Santi, that was great. Thanks Thank you very much. I know you did. Did that redu- reluctantly? <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I just don't. I don't. I love singing. It. I, I enjoy it. You know. I mean, I, I know singing. I sing in uni more than I've ever sung in a band. Just because. Yeah. Because I, I, I think if if I expect people to sing and I expect the singers to sing, I've got to sing in front of them. So yeah. I'll, I'll sing every day. But I, I've sung once on stage, and you 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 found they found the video clip. It was once in Austin, and it's a little church in Austin, and we, me and Fran were on an acoustic tour around America, which was great fun. It was kind of like one of these shows. We we sort of did the, the band the history of the band chronologically Fran mm. had a powerpoint he had slides and things and it, it was like it was half talking half playing and me and him would play the songs in between and it was like the history of Travis it's sort of chronologically through and then the, 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 just as an aside note about that tour this show was about two hours long and then the first night Fran went right okay if anyone wants anything signed we'll sign it after the show and he set that present the first show so we had to sign things for about two hours after it so it was like a four hour night of just like playing and then signing things and so it was quite intense but it was good but we hit Austin and the, the one of the, this girl that's like you know followed us for years really really great fan you know sort of like really sort of into the band and into the, sort of the obscure stuff said would you do that song mm-hmm. and I foolishly said yes and forgot the words about halfway through because I've never sung it before I'll tell you what I'll, I'll, at the end of this at the end of this podcast yeah. I'll put that clip in of that song yeah, if yeah. I got your permission to do that yeah of course you can I yeah, will yeah. I will put the clip in yeah, of that yeah. I'll, I'll find it mess- again I'll be messing it up <laughs> I, I'll find it again and I'll, yeah. Yeah, I'll put that clip in yeah um, but it's been very nice speaking nice to you to thank you, you very much yeah. for uh, coming in no problem, no problem. Um, where can people find Travis it's uh, oh you see I'm useless at the socials we were talking <laughs> about this before I'm, I'm, a, I'm an old man it's like you know my, um, it's Travis Band on Facebook Travis the band on Instagram. Oh no, no, it's just Travis on Facebook. Travis yeah. the band on Instagram and tra- Travis band capital T capital B on Twitter. Sound. And I think there's a TikTok there as well, but I can't remember what that is. It'll be Travis the band or something <laughs> as well. I was trying to find out there. Well, make sure you go and find Travis. Make sure you come and find myself. It's TaylorJ.music on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to the Big Condo Music channel, and I will see you next week with more of the Big Band Theory. Sometimes I wonder how long